So, at this point, we've had Vanguard forced onto most machines for a few weeks now. And since then, the talks kinda quieted down. On one side, it could be because... What else do you really want to mention there? But on the other side, it could be that the people who like League simply have to deal with it if they want to play League. Regardless of the current perception though, with this kind of kernel level anti-cheat, Riot had to have a reason to push it out. There had to be a reason for Riot to upgrade their anti-cheat, right? Otherwise, what we had before would be totally fine which over time became more and more the case as more people chipped in with their knowledge. This is absolutely my realm of expertise, and I've never liked kernel level anti-cheat, ever. I think that it's ridiculous. Well, if you go back to what Riot said about Vanguard, they mentioned that the main reason for them to push it out is to catch botters and scripters. Scripting doesn't happen that often because it is far easier to detect it. Or at least it depends on what kind of a script it is. All you need is a couple of reports from the players, the system can then focus on the individual, and it can find patterns in behavior. Botting, however, is something that is a lot more interesting. Because while bots are designed to move with pattern-like behavior, you can give them some variations which can really throw off the detection. This would also suggest that bots are the main reason Riot is dealing with, not scripting. Which would bring up one big question. Why? Why would we have so many bots that it becomes a problem for Riot? Well, as always, it's because money. But in League's case, it has the most hilarious twist I have ever seen. You see, when it comes to bots, I have a decent experience with dealing with them from other games. I honestly believe I have never seen a bot in League of Legends. But in something like WoW? Oh boy, is there a big reason why they are there. You see, World of Warcraft has something called RMT, or Real Money Trading. Simply said, people farm in-game gold and then sell it for real money. Which in most third world countries will earn you more than any other job. Now, in the modern version of WoW, the trading was diminished a little bit by introducing an official way to buy gold. However, over time it was proven that this didn't really do anything. In the classic old school version of WoW, however, there are no ways to officially buy gold. Which means that gold farming is a lot more valuable. And of course, remember, it should be obvious that real money trading is against the terms of service. So people are risking getting banned. Anyway, this is why classic WoW has been plagued with bots. People make new accounts, the bots start farming gold automatically, and they try to get as much as possible before getting banned. After which they sell the gold to other players and that's how they make money. Now of course, you have to keep in mind that World of Warcraft has a subscription model. So you have to buy the subscription for every bot you make. This means that in order for the bot farming to be worth it, you have to hit the point to break even with the initial costs, after which everything else becomes profit. And the sad reality is, apparently the bots make profit merely hours after they are created. There were quite a few creators who talked about this issue in the past. So for a very long time, all the way until the season of discovery made some changes around this, there was a lot of money in the entire botting market. But now, how is this related to League? League doesn't have any real money trading. It's not like you can farm gold in-game and then sell it to people. So how does the botting market work in League? Well, it is all tied to accounts. Of which there are many kinds, with different people having different reasons for the purchase. But mainly there is one kind of an account that makes all the botting worth it. Now, before we dive into that, let's talk about... Where can you even buy these accounts? Uh, well, I'm not showing you because I don't want to support any of these websites. But it's kind of funny that with a simple Google search, you can just find all of the websites. Of course, the servers are hosted on Russian or Venezuelan servers. So trying to take them down would be like Riot shouting at a wall. If nobody picks up the phone on the other side of the line, there is not much you can do. But funnily enough, you can even find some accounts on eBay or Amazon. Not to mention that some of them are on Trustpilot as verified companies. 
How does this even happen? There is no way this is real. Fast delivery of the product. Got 4 skins for free and the account had great MMR. Felt a bit sketchy but super nice service with the skin choice. Immediately received the account and no issues so far. Best MMR account and so cheap and you pick whatever skin you want, no extra price, very nice. What is scary about these is that I don't believe these are botted reviews. I'm losing faith in humanity here. Anyway, as I mentioned, there are different reasons for people to be purchasing these. So let's start with perhaps the most common purchase. In a hilarious twist of fates, the fact that League of Legends is an incredibly toxic game means a lot of people get banned. And when they do, they have two options. Either they level up a brand new account, or they buy it. And they can buy a fully leveled up account for only $10. That's right, remember, in order for you to be able to play ranked, your account needs to be at least level 30. So the bots have to level it up, at which point you can sell it for $10. Now here's the thing, unlike the case with WoW, League has no entry fee. There is no subscription or anything like that. So there is no breaking even with the initial cost. As long as you manage to sell the account at all, it should be profitable. Of course, minus any costs related to the bot. Look, I have no idea what the botting price is or who even makes them. The point is, making profit in League is a lot easier. You can basically make as many accounts as you want and make them all run on a single machine. Which is doable since League can run on a potato. After which you can literally rake in thousands of dollars. And this is the first case where Vanguard might actually do something. It is better at detecting these farms and pushing for hardware bans. Meaning that instead of banning the individual accounts, they just ban the entire computer with thousands of accounts on them. Of course, all of this can be also done through normal anti-cheat, but Kernel has certain advantages here. Now of course, buying new accounts is not the only thing you can do. In some cases, the player's skills might be awful, but they might want to flex to their friends with their diamond account. So why don't you buy it? Well, now we are looking at the price tag of roughly $60. That's right, for the price of a full game, you too can be a diamond gamer. I love how they even have a tag to let you know if it was leveled up by hand or if it was a bot. They are not even hiding it. And of course, the bot is cheaper because there is the risk of it getting detected. But still, 60 bucks? On one side, that is a lot for an account without an investment fee. But on the other side, that's a cheap diamond account. I mean, did the bots really rank those accounts? There had to have been a real person going through the ranked ladder with these, right? That has to be the case because they have master level accounts for 120 bucks. But you know what's the best thing about all of this? These accounts are not even the majority of the profitable market. For that, there is a whole different rabbit hole. And a massive shout out to Outside Joe, who did not only make one video on this, but two. And both are hilarious. You see, there is one kind of account that is a very popular purchase. And it is related to one thing people kept mentioning when Riot pushed for Vanguard. If Vanguard is so needed, why haven't we seen any bots in our games? Well, you should be happy if you haven't, because that means you are an above average player. Because the best and most valuable accounts in League of Legends are found with the lowest ranks possible. That's right, have you ever wanted to inflate your ego because your life is spinning out of control and you really just wanted to turn into a piece of crap? Just buy an Iron 4 account. It's a place where you are sure to destroy your opposition. And if not, you really have to reconsider your life choices. I mean, have you ever seen what's happening in Iron 4? It's like playing against AI. Why would you even buy an account for that? You see, Iron 4 is such a big problem that after you learn about it, you'll realize that all of Riot's decisions kinda circled around this. Remember how Riot announced that their new ranked system will be better at placing you where you belong with your rank? Yes, on one side it could be just correcting some mistakes when it comes to placements. But on the other side, if you are a gold player playing on an iron account, the system will be faster at detecting that. And it will quickly put that account back to gold. 
That's why sometimes you can play a gold game, but you might have an iron teammate. There is the likelihood it is a bot account. Now, from my limited research, Iron 4 accounts are roughly around 30 or 40 bucks, which isn't as high as some of the higher ranks. However, because these don't require any kind of skill to get them running, you literally just fire up a bot and let it do whatever it wants as long as it loses. These accounts are far easier to make and therefore they are more profitable. But now you may be asking, well, is there really that many of them? Well, yes and the stats show it. When Outside Joke made a video on this topic a year ago, at that time, the king of all bots was still Annie. A champion that is so mechanically simple, a bot can play her. Which is why, during one period in history, she was around 30% win rate in Iron. Because most of the Annies there were bots. But over time, as the anti-cheat became better, more and more of these bots were picked up. Which meant that in these cases, most of the bots didn't even get to the finish line before getting sold. Which is where a new king dropped onto the Iron Throne. Yep. That's right, Yumi has an amazing advantage. When you attach yourself to another champion, nobody has any idea what's happening in your head. So what the bots can do is just attach themselves to another champion and just randomly press buttons. As long as you do something, the system is unlikely to detect you. Which is why, if you check the global win rates for Iron 4 today, you will see Yumi at the very bottom with two whole percent below the second to last champion. And that's while having quadrupled the number of games. Now of course on one side, the win rate could be related to the fact that Yumi is a bit more difficult champion to play, at least properly. And from the perspective of an Iron player. So of course, people would be losing with her. But at the same time, her win rate is not as low as any, because at the end of the day, the bot just attaches to a champion and if they just press buttons, they can do a lot in the game. It is Yumi after all. So the win rate is also higher because of that. But here you also need to remember that Iron 4 is a mystical place that warps reality. Because here, out of 167 champions, only 10 have positive win rate. So the accounts that get here legitimately, stay here legitimately. Unless someone buys them and plays a very complicated champion that somehow has very high win rate in Iron 4. Hmm. But yes, this is Riot's current botting battle. It is not one you will see because it is happening in a forsaken place. But it is still Riot's servers that are being paid for, that are hosting the games for all of these bots, that farm accounts and then sell them for profit. All while Riot is just losing resources and server capacities. So in a way, you could see this battle with bots as an investment on Riot's part. Perhaps they are going against the bots not because the account market would be that problematic, but because it's worth removing the bots because they are leeching resources. Though from my perspective, none of this really justifies Vanguard. Because if this was the main issue, there is one very simple fix for this problem. Just remove smurfing. There is literally no point to having smurf accounts besides boosting your own ego. It doesn't benefit the latter, it doesn't benefit the quality of games, and you know what? Dota was right all along. 